Hi, welcome to Real World Riding. I'm Steve. Um, in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at wheels and wheel issues. Initially, we're going to look at the workshop thing, um, which is swapping a rim. So maybe you want to upgrade or you've got a damaged rim and you want to swap it over at home. Um, this is a great, it's relatively easy, it's a bit rough and ready, uh, but you get maximum, uh, maximum levels of uh, satisfaction or self-satisfaction points out of doing this. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And then we're going to move on to repairs out on the trail. And I've got two issues for you that we're going to look at around broken spokes um, out on the trail. And then the, the last bit, the fourth bit of the video, we're just going to be looking at some of the things that you might choose to carry um, if you want to, if you want to be able to deal with this, if you think it's going to be an issue for you while you're out riding. So it might be a multiple day thing. So, um, so those are the four things we're going to do. Let's get cracking. You don't need a lot of tools and kit. You do need a couple of things, but not very much. So to start off with, you're going to need roller gaff tape. You can use electrical tape, that's absolutely fine. You're going to need a screwdriver. So this is a flat screwdriver. You're going to need a spoke key, and this is a multiple size spoke key, but or, uh, that or a, set, a spoke key that will um, that will fit your spokes. Failing that, you could potentially do this with pliers, but spoke key is much, much better. And then some light oil. That's all you're going to need. That and a massive bucket of patience. So we'll start off with, I've got, got my wheel with my damaged rim and I've got a new rim or a replacement rim. So they are the same size. And I've checked, obviously they're the same diameter, but there can be some differences in actual diameter on the outside and definitely diameter on the inside. So it needs to be close to the original one because we're going to use the same spokes. Um, if you uh, want to get really into uh, wheel building, you'll find that each wheel, each rim, needs a different set of spokes depending on what the, uh, what the hub is. So we've, if we're taking all that complicated stuff away, we're replacing either like for like for an identical one, or we're going for one that's, um, that's around about the same size within a few millimetres. It's also got the same number of spoke holes as well. That's always worth checking. It's not a lot of variation, but there can be occasionally, so make sure we've got the same of those. So we've got two clean rims uh, and we've got access to the spoke holes. That's great. So we'll just have a quick look at uh, spoke nipples and spokes themselves before we get cracking. So spokes. So um, you can get blade spokes or you can get round spokes. This is a black one. You can get silver ones. You can also get straight pull spokes as well and they, they deal with a lot of the issues that we're going to have with this. So we're going for the most complicated one which is this one. So it's got a hooked end with a nubbin on the end and that's what prevents it from being pulled out from the hub so that's the hub end and then at this end we've got the nipple and threaded end you can see the thread coming out there so it's actually a threaded bar and then we've got the nipple on the end there so the nipple it's got a square section there which you can get hold of with your spoke key and the rest of it goes into the rim and then we have the end of it there so there's the hole there for the spoke to come out of and it's a straight screwdriver slot in there. There is some variation to this. Uh, DT have um, a Torx key or reverse Torx key so that makes it a little bit more complicated but if you've got basic wheels this is not dissimilar to what you'll have. You might get them anodized or things like that. So that's what we're that's what we're playing with. So okay. we've got our two wheels or two rims. And what we're going to then do is we're going to line up spoke holes with the spoke holes so let's get them all exactly lined up and then we're going to take I like to use masking tape but any old tape you like it's just masking takes a little bit easier to get off afterwards I'm going to take the masking tape and I'm going to hold the two rims together and I'm going to tape them together as they are pretty tightly so I'll tape it there I'm taping them really feeling making sure that they're really tightly attached to each other really lined up so I'm going across the way and I'll do that three or four times until I've got the two two uh, rims really firmly attached to each other and really side got by side. these two rims taped to each other now they're nice and firmly attached the, the holes are nicely lined up and I've, as much as possible, lined up the outside of the rims there as well. So it is nice and square. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap over the spokes 
one at a time. So it doesn't really matter too much where I start. I'm going to take my screwdriver and I am then going to pick a spoke and I'm going to unscrew it. Now you can hear a bit of groaning, that's because this isn't very well lubricated. Remember I said we've got some light oil in our kit. Blimey, that's noisy. And this is just as, it's an ordinary nut, just a funny shape. So you unscrew it by applying the righty tighty lefty loosey rule. So I am rotating to the left as I'm looking onto it and unscrewing it. And eventually it will stop complaining. There we go. And that is the spoke loose quite a long thread so sometimes it takes a wee while yeah let's stop complaining but it's still attached let's get there and should do very soon this is the first one so it's always a little bit more awkward that's quite a long one yeah there we go all the way through We're not coming loose yet. There we go. So that one's off. Now, one of the things you need to worry about if you're wheel building is the layup. So, which spokes go which direction, how which hole it goes to. Doing it this way, don't have to worry at all because what you're going to do is you're going to com completely copy. You're going to do it one at a time. So, I've taken that one out. I am now going to, I'm actually going to reuse this. So, I'm now swapping this over to the other one. You could buy, they're relatively cheap, you could buy new spoke nipples. That would be perfectly acceptable and quite a good idea because they're really difficult to maintain. They tend to get quite uh, quite corroded. A little bit of light oil and that's just going to go down to the middle and that will make this job a little bit easier but also make the spoke nipple last a little bit longer. Push it in. There we go, engage the thread carefully, don't want to cross thread that, and then do it up. And I'm going to do it reasonably tight. Now if I remember, it, I had to unthread it a long way, so there's going to be a fair bit to go in there. And that's it, there we go. Reasonably well done. So I'm going to get a little bit of tension on that. Not loads because we'll be uh, we'll be sorting it later on. A little bit of tension on that. Put it on there. And now there we go. Now on to the next one. You don't need to watch me do that. The next one is exactly the same as the first. So you unscrew it, swap it over, put the uh, the nipple through, or put a new nipple in. A little bit of light oil, and then in you go. And if you're going to do that, and I'm not going to in this film because that's not very exciting. You're going to do that all the way around the outside, all the way back to the start. Because you've not actually moved the spokes around, you've kept the layup. So as long as your first wheel was built right, it's fairly, fairly likely it was, as long as it's built right, you'll have the spokes in the same position. So what you'll end up with is effectively moving the second rim or the new rim over onto, um, onto, your, uh, onto your spokes, onto your hub. And that's how to get the rim on. The only thing you left then, then you've got two things that you need to, to get right. First, need, it needs to be round, and it needs to be left or right of the centre of your hub in the right place. It needs to be dished right. So we'll just briefly look at that as well in a second. So the thing, two things we want to deal with are dishing, so whether it's in or out in the right place, and also how round it is as well. So that's what we're going to look at now. So uh, dishing is the first place, the first thing to look at. Um, so it's quite handy if you've got a, a ruler. And what that you can do with that is you can measure the distance, the rough distances, to get it about right between the two parts of your frame. So here I'm just using an old frame. I've put it in a, um, a bike stand. You can turn it upside down, do it in your living room if you can get away with it. Personally, I get sent out into the garage for this. So a ruler kind of, you can get it into round about the right place, so that's not far off at all. Um, 
and I can talk about that in a second how you get in how do you get to that then what we're going to do is a nice simple job with zip tie and roughly a pair of pliers and I'm just going to nip that off I might adjust that in a minute what I'm going to do hopefully you can see that is I'm just going to rotate it until it doesn't touch the rim you can hear it scraping on there what that will do in tiny parts will tell me where it's not attached and you will hear it look, there a little scrape you might not be able to hear that but as it goes round there's a tiny scrape and that's the point where it suddenly it moves in and then out so it's it's the dishing's not quite right okay this is the bit you need really loads and loads of patience for that if you like getting the rim on was the easy bit um, getting it round um, is the is the is the tough bit so what I'm going to do when I find the bit that it touches I need to work out what I'm going to do with it so it might touch or it might go really quiet because you've got it running round or you might be looking at it and seeing the gap between the end of your cable tie and the rim getting bigger and smaller okay basically you've worked out whether it's going in and out what you need to remember if that all sounds really complicated is that each of these spokes in turn comes from a different side of the hub so when you're pulling let's get the camera down a little bit there there's a nice grubby hub if you're tightening a hub uh, a spoke on this side so on this side of the hub if you're tightening one of these spokes here it will pull the rim in that direction if we're doing one on the other side pulling one of those so um, one of the alternate ones what it will do is it will pull it the other way so in order to move the rim in or out what we need to do is in essence is tighten up the spokes on the side that you want it to come towards so left or right in this instance but what you also need to do so avoid over tightening is the first thing you want to do is loosen them off on the other side so that loosens it off and then you can pull it across with the others hopefully that makes sense but quite possibly you're still asking yourself well that's fine but how do I tighten them up and that's the next section so to pull them left or right what we're going to do is going to use a screwdriver and we can remembering lefty left lefty loosey righty tighty if I can access the hole I can with this one here if I wanted to pull it off to the left in this picture then what I do is I would this one would want to go tighter so I would loosen this one off and then loosen this one off and then this one will get tighter there we go and that will pull it across that little bit about about that section will pull that section across a little bit okay and you're just going to need to go that because obviously moving that bit across will affect this bit and this bit of the rim which means every time you don't make an adjustment a tiny adjustment using a, using your cable tie moving it in or out and making sure it's the same distance both sides every time you do something on one side it will move the other side as well and you need to be careful about that so as it's going round it's really easy because it's nice and round to lose track of what bit you're working on so what you can do is use a little bit of tape to mark the spoke so this is the one that this is the point in the rim here that it, um, needs to get moved it needs to get moved across so I'm going to work on this bit so I'll maybe loosen this one tighten these two it might be loosen this one uh, might be lo might loosen two of them and tighten three of them for a larger area with a more subtle move as I get closer to the end 
I'm just going to go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and I'm only going to do it in, in quarter turns. Now, if you've not got access, maybe you've got, um, it's, it's harder to get hold of, or you've got a tubeless one where the uh, spoke nipples are attached um, on there on the inside, then you might need to use your spoke key. And the trick with the spoke key is remembering that the thread is set up from looking at it from the direction we're looking at it here. So when you've got it attached to the um, attached to the spoke nipple, you've got to remember if I want to loosen it off, I've got to turn it that way. Okay, to loosen it off, I'm going to turn it to the left, as if I was looking at it from this direction. Okay. Um, if they're a bit tight, you can lube them a little bit as well. A little bit of WD-40 can go right into into the um, right into the nipples, and that will uh, that will that will ease them off nicely. That's effectively it in terms of left and right. You're dishing um, and actually having it not pretzel shaped. When you've done that, sit down, maybe have a beer, congratulate yourself, but not too much because then what you've got to do is either get another zip tie or get a rule and what you've got to then do is you've got to make sure that the thing's actually round rather than oval and that's the next section. Remember it's a bit of a rough and ready dodgy fix so what I've done here is I've just simply put a bit of masking tape straight across fairly carefully almost touching the rim up at the top there and that will let me know how near the edge of the rim the tape is okay and when it gets further or closer you know then it's slightly slightly not round so I can spin that round and I can see where it gets closer and where it gets further away and believe me you might not be able to see it there but I can see it's in and out in and out all over the place now it's clearly not oval it's pretty round but it does go in and out a little bit and we're going to apply the same process as we did for making sure that the dishing was right uh, and it's actually round is we're going to make sure um, that we identify which bits go in and which bits go out and this bit actually here that I marked with a bit of tape there is actually quite a lot out the way and so then what we're going to do is we're going to pull those in and again bearing in mind how much the tension we're putting so if you're really cranking on these you don't want to pull these in you want to let other bits out in order to get them get it around but what I would do is instead of using alternate spokes what I would do is then use all the spokes in one area. So all of these spokes, regardless of which side of the hub they're on, all of them will pull this side in if I tighten them up. So next we're gonna look at what to do if you break a spoke. So you might have something that looks a little bit like this. Oh no, it's gone, it's gone. Um, what are you gonna do? Well, there are a number of things you can do. First of all, you can just ignore it. So if you're going to do that, what you need to do is just hoist these around and a little bit of tape to stop them flinging themselves around and getting caught in other things and maybe injuring you. So yeah, there's your first solution, nice and simple. We'll just tape them up. More likely with electrical tape, if you're carrying that, you're less likely to be carrying uh, masking tape. Tape them up. And now we've got a slightly weaker wheel, so we'll, we'll take it easy a little bit more. But we've only broken one. The thing to remember with that is, though, why did it break? You know, if something went into it, well, that's different. That may have been treated very differently from the, the others. But if it just broke as you were going through a rock garden, it may well be an indicator that your spokes are getting a bit old and tired. And maybe it's time to uh, replace the wheel or have, have it rebuilt. Um, so... Have a think about why it might have might have gone but uh, yeah that's that's your first solution tape it up keep yourself protected carry on going maybe being a little bit lighter on that, that wheel so solution two is to try and put some tension in this area here on this on this spoke so this one's attached so what i'm going to do is i'm taking a pair of nasal nose pliers a good solid pair of pliers and what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to it's not easy to do that on camera is i'm going to create pair of loops in my spokes. You may need to just take my word for it. Okay. Oh yeah. A couple of loops in the spokes. That is one. And then one in this end as well. This is a little bit easier. I'm trying to do this without knocking the camera. There we go. Uh, 
Oh, so that's a pretty quick job. Nasty, nasty. There we go. So I've got a couple of loops. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of climbing cord. And a bit of climbing cord. music to go on the back of this. That into there, this into here, and then the trick is to go back into your loop again. So I've got a zigzag, it's effectively a pulley, because I'm going to need quite a lot of tension on this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull really hard. Really got that in there. And then what we're going to need to do is grip that really tight between my fingers, bring it up, and then keeping the tension. What I want to do then is just tie it a knot in that. Well, let's see. It's not a knot. Keeping that tension there. Just pressing my finger on there so it doesn't run through the hook. And then tie a series of knots in there. Now these aren't completely in line, but believe me, there's a lot of tension in there, and if we ping the spokes, it's a bit dull. There's quite a lot of tension on that, enough that that's gonna pull that into a better shape than it was. Obviously you then need to tidy up the rest of the cord. Okay, so the tools for that repair were just a pair of pliers and a bit of climbing cord. And obviously a pen knife would be quite useful to, to tie off the end there, but you can you can wrap it around, make a nice shape, whatever. So I deliberately demoed the last one um, on a rear wheel so I could show you this. Now obviously uh, with a cassette, there's, you're not gonna be able to get this spoke out if you wanted to replace it. And one of the things I've not talked about is one of the, one of the solutions, um, well I guess it's coming on the end, I did say what well, things you might carry. There are people that will, if they're going on long trips, they'll take a spoke and a spare spoke and they'll tape it to one of their other spokes so they've got a complete spoke. If you're going a long way, it's worth thinking about that. But you can't get that in there, in behind the uh, cassette. Now this one um, that I used earlier on, it's broken outside the uh, external to the cassette so we could still run the last, um, last fix. But what if you either want to swap your spoke or your spoke breaks back of the back of the uh, cassette and you can't get in there or there isn't enough of it and that's where the nightmare scenario comes in okay how to deal with the nightmare scenario so I put a cassette on um, it's, a, it's a it's an old cassette what can we do so what tools have we got so far we're going to get going to want to try to get the uh, get the cassette off. So I've not put it on properly. It should have a lock ring on there holding that on. So the first thing you're going to do, you're not going to be able to get away without a lock ring tool. So you're going to need to get a lock ring tool in there to get the lock ring off. Um, and you're going to need a spanner of some sort. So get the smallest one that will still go around your lock ring. So that's that. And that is, that's about that hole or this thing here reasonably heavy it's about 27 grams something like that so that's a big chunk to take there but that's what you're going to need to do unless you can bodge something up out yourself at home that's what you're going to need to do to get the lock ring off but to get the lock ring off you've also got to stop this from spinning round now ordinarily for that in the workshop you'd use um, you'd use a chain whip but we're going to try and do without that and it is possible to do without that by using a lot I'm not going to do it because it's quite wasteful of plastic a lot of zip ties and we're going to spread the load so what you would do is put zip ties through your cassette put a bunch of them through so as I said before I'm not going to waste these zip ties and add a bit more plastic to the planet but you would run as many as you possibly can there. So you can get, as these go through, I can get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Could use 12 if I wanted to. They're all spreading the load, so you're spreading the load. One definitely wouldn't do it. 
Um, I've done it with about six before. Uh, depends on the tension, but you basically attach the cassette to the spokes. Then you can engage the lock ring and it will hold it enough that you can get the lock ring off. That will then enable you to take off your cassette take the remains of your spoke off and then replace it with the new spoke or curl the end over use the string method and then put the cassette back on again once you've done the repair then obviously you're going to need to put the cassette back on again um, so you've just used maybe six zip ties you've cut them all we don't carry an infinite number of them so you've got a bunch of uh, zip ties that you've used you've cut them to take this off you're not going to need them again to put it back on, a big, on again because you're going against the free hub so you just need to put the tension on that turn it around and it's on and then you've got your spoke replaced um, or repaired behind the cassette so there you go that's the that's the the nightmare scenario scenario one cool so then we're going to move on to what things might you carry so we'll just look at those tools <laughs> going to look at some of the things you might want to carry so number one you might want to take a, a spoke key with you that will help you if you ding the rim slightly uh, bend a few spokes you might help you bring that, that wheel back into true make it round again okay so that's something you might want to consider taking with you that was reasonably heavy but that's that's one thing you want to might want to consider what other tools have we used well for several of the fixes we've used a decent pair of pliers okay so I can thoroughly recommend a decent pair of pliers taking those with you okay they'll do a number of things these are also significantly lighter than a, le than a Leatherman okay they're actually re relatively light but good and solid um, and they've got a set of cutters on the back as well which is quite handy so you've got those you might want to take or tape a um, a spare spoke with you um, maybe onto your wheel or put it in your bag um, you might want to do that if you're going to go on a longer trip then you might pre-prepare some of the stuff that we've uh, talked about before so here I've got a little bundle and it's got two um, two spokes so the uh, rim ends of the spokes one of which has got a, um, a spoke nipple on it just in case a, dam a damaged a spoke nipple and they're pre-curled and if I had a uh, really short one, I needed uh, needed to. I've got a um, I've got a section that goes into the hub, but that's straight. I haven't put a curl on that because you won't get it into the hub if you need to uh, need to do that without it being straight. Now these are for this type of uh, spokes. If you've got a straight pull spoke, it will just have a thing on the end, and we don't need to worry about any of the stuff we just talked about because as soon as the tension comes off the spoke, it can come out of the hub, no problem whatsoever. So they're really easy to work with and you don't need to worry about taking cassettes off and things like that either um, they're just brilliant so that and a bit of cord you can make yourself out of all you need is one and you can buy them from bike shops one um, you can, that could just be made out of a single spoke um, that there and a bit of climbing cord there you go bung it in your bag and hope you never have to use it I shouldn't be needing to try and sell you on uh, zip ties but a pile of zip ties and some decent ones reasonably thick ones um, don't weigh very much don't take up much space um, million and one uses and then if you want to get really esoteric about it what you can do rather than their ghetto style what you can do is you can get these things from Fibrax and remember I was making a pulley between the two rings um, on my split uh, spokes well this has goes one better than that and you can actually see it in the thing in here it's nice and small nice and compact it has instructions on it um, some really really good strong cord um, and uh, a little clutch mechanism to get that tension really really up, up tight um, so those you can get over the internet um, and that's that's a that's a manufacturer's way of doing what I've done there with that stuff there you go then if you think you might need to take take a uh, cassette off then you're going to need the cassette ring now quite often 
you'll get ones that look like this um, to hold them into your axle that's quite big and heavy you can get this is a park tool one you can get significantly smaller lighter ones um, and that's quite small again it's a chunk of metal so it does weigh a little bit one of those and then the smallest lightest span you can get unless you can find a solution um, that's lighter than that or smaller than that but that's that's what i found and again because of the weight of that i rarely rarely do that i'm also lucky enough that a lot of my spokes are um, straight pull but it doesn't mean my clients are um, so occasionally if I'm doing something big and rough I will slip that into the bag somewhere and that's that's it in terms of the stuff that we used um, to do the rim swap then obviously we have the tape the oil and the screwdriver and we did have that in reserve but we didn't actually really need to use that if we didn't need it so that's all you need it's pretty simple it doesn't inv involve investing very much a spare spoke will cost you pennies um, but you can make that solution and a bit of, a bit of string won't cost you very much either um, but stuff that might get you out of a bad place in the middle of nowhere um, if that's where you're going to end up thanks very much for watching everybody um, if you found that useful, that's brilliant. That's what it's about. We are trying to support uh, riders of all natures getting out and about on their bikes, on the trails, in the hills, wherever. Um, so, so if that's helpful, then that's brilliant. If you've got any other questions, and then fire us off to us. Um, you can email, you can go through Facebook, or you can just drop in the comments below the video. Um, if you've got any other questions as well, then uh, fire them off. Um, I can create other videos of other things if you've got issues you want to get it covered. Um, or I'm more than happy to give straight answers to folks um, if you fire them off to me. So uh, thanks again very much for watching, and I will hopefully see you see you here another time maybe, or see you out on the trail. Take it easy, everybody. <laughs>